Home study for week eight. Reading, number one, from Can We Talk to God, chapter six, spiritual evolution, pages 45 through 52. Chapter eight, on becoming receptive to the divine, pages 63 through 70. Part two, effective prayer, pages 111 through 147. Number two, read the next section in the student workbook, Continuous Prayer. Other, connect with your prayer partner and do a verbal mind treatment for each other. Project, please prepare a written or artistic representation of the power of your word. You can use poetry, music, drawing, or painting, or any medium to express your understanding of affirmative prayer. Week 8, Continuous Prayer. This week, in this final class session, we will discuss the most common form of prayer, the beliefs that underlie our automatic reactions to everyday circumstances. These reactions based upon old beliefs or past experiences can begin to be secondary causes and create a new effect in our lives. Knowing our everyday beliefs can affect our lives, as well as the prayers we have been praying. Ah. Knowing our everyday beliefs can affect our lives, as well as the prayers we have been praying, is a good reason to pay attention to what we are feeling at any given moment. If we are feeling any limitation, it is a signal to consciously turn within and center into our divine knowing. In this class session, we will look at some points of our personal everyday beliefs. How are we triggered? What causes are we setting in motion? What is the lie and what is the truth? What do we need to know in our lives, experiences, relationships daily? What spiritual practices can we develop to build our conviction every day, every moment? We are, in our outside world, a result of the subjective state of our thought. The acquired subjective and perhaps largely unconscious thought patterns which we entertain are continually impinging upon our environment, attracting and repelling without our conscious awareness. The subconscious content of one's thought determines what is going to happen to him. It seems to be the medium between the absolute and the relative in our experience. In such a degree as we re-educate our habitual thought patterns, they will automatically react in accord with the mechanical law, a law of reflection. Ernest Holmes. Continuous Prayer. Continuous Prayer. Sidebar. The mind can accept or it can reject, but it cannot do both with the same proposition. The mind cannot accept what it rejects. It cannot embody what it denies. It will not accept what it refuses to believe. Ernest Holmes. Prayers, empowered by belief and conviction, are transformational processes, processes that open the door for a greater expression of who we are in our oneness with God. Our consciousness is made up of our beliefs. Our beliefs are acted on by creative law. Beliefs can open us to a greater expression of God in our lives, or they can limit our experience of good. Creative law acts on our beliefs. Not only our prayer words, but all of our beliefs. We pray all the time. Answered prayer. Before continuing, let's talk about answered prayer. A prayer, spoken for a greater expression of wholeness, a greater expression of God, spoken with absolute conviction, is always answered, corresponding with our belief. The question now is, How does it manifest? One possibility is that the demonstration is taking place in the unseen or that it is subtle. However it manifests, it is life-affirming. A second possibility is that the prayer seed needs more nurturing, more prayer to demonstrate in the way you would like it to. Perhaps more prayer is needed to dissolve any disbelief. The seed has not taken root, but is not yet manifesting. It's time to go deeper in knowing the truth of your life. Pray again. Another possibility is that the prayer may not demonstrate at all. 
It could be that the prayer belief has been replaced by disbelief. That disbelief will be acted on by creative law. Belief is the power that births the prayer, feeds the prayer, and maintains the prayer. To permanently change your life, our conviction must be ongoing. We need to examine our everyday beliefs, not just those expressed in prayer. We tend to look at prayer as an isolated activity, a tool, a quick fix, or an emergency maneuver. We think it's something we do one time and then it's done. That's not how life works. Prayer doesn't end with the amen. Our ongoing beliefs, conscious and unconscious thought, word and deed, continuously create new beliefs that are acted on by creative law. These new beliefs will either interrupt or nurture our prayers and our life. We are here to express more of who we really are. It's not a one-time task. It's a lifetime task. Sidebar. Someone has said that the entire world is suffering from one big fear, the fear that God will not answer our prayers. Let us analyze the fears which possess us and see if this is true. The fear of lack is nothing more than the f- belief that God does not and will not supply us with whatever we need. The fear of death is the belief that the promises of eternal life may not be true. The fear of loss of health, loss of friends, loss of property, all arise from the belief that God is not all that we claim. Om- omniscient, omnipo- omnipotence, and omnipresence. Ernest Holmes Interrupting Prayer Jesus said, A house which is divided against itself shall fall. Luke chapter 11 verse 17 It is not unusual for people to say a powerful prayer and then live a life totally contrary to their prayer. The prayer is life-affirming, God-affirming, but their actions are not. They say one thing and live another. In the example below, the individual prays and acts in contrary ways. The prayer belief is prosperity. The actions, stinginess. The beliefs, prosperity is based on belief in abundance. Stinginess is based on belief that there is not enough. Which belief is answered? If we pray two opposing prayers, the stronger of the two prayers will demonstrate more. To nurture the greater expression of God, we must live a life in alignment with the essence of our prayer, in alignment with good, God. We must be the prayer and be what we desire in all of our relationships, not just during prayer time. Don't pray to be an opening for love and then treat people with disregard and insult. Don't open to God's expression of truth and wisdom and then deceive and lie. In other words, Don't pray for one thing and be another. Be mindful of what you're feeling, what you're doing, and what you believe. Prayer and doubt. Sometimes we doubt that the prayer is answered. That means we doubt who we are as perfect expressions of God. Doubt is a belief, and it will be acted on by creative law. Let's review the prayer sequence here. First, you believe the prayer is true. Then you believe the prayer is not true in your doubt. Where are you now? You can't serve two masters. Why do you doubt? Pray on the answer to that. Ernest Holmes said, If you don't believe in treatment, treat until you do. Sidebar. Jesus said, When we keep the eye single, the whole body will be filled with light. Turning to the light, we receive that light. But turning only to darkness, even such light as we have will become dimmed. We cannot serve two masters. Ernest Holmes Prayer and Fear Are you comfortable with your prayer? Some people are afraid that their prayer will will be answered. Why be afraid? What frightens you? Would an answered prayer feel too big for your life? Do you feel you are unworthy of an answered prayer? Why? Fear is based on a belief. Fear opposes faith. If there is fear of the prayer being answered, find the belief behind the fear and infuse it with truth and faith. Pray on it. Old patterns, 
a removal process. Pay attention to your everyday feelings. Old limiting patterns can trigger you out of your prayer's truth. What's the trigger telling you? If an old belief, doubt, or fear surfaces, don't judge yourself. Healing limiting ideas is a process. It took time to build those beliefs, and it may take time to dissolve them. The good news is, even though it's a process, your belief continues to be acted on by creative law. However deep your conviction is, keep praying. Nurture your prayer. As you nurture your prayer, you are deepening your belief with the, in the truth of your being. Life gives us many opportunities to deepen. We can infuse prayer interruptions, opposing beliefs, old patterns, doubt, and fear with renewed prayer and conviction. We can do more powerful prayer. We can live a life-affirming, good-affirming existence as the norm in life in all of your relationships every day. We can maintain a personal spiritual practice. Continuous prayer. Our beliefs are prayers and we pray continuously. Whether we believe in abundant good or limited good, our beliefs are our prayers and we pray continuously. To express the good of God, we must know that this good is already here as our life now. Seek ye the kingdom first. The kingdom is within. This might feel like a lot of work, but it's actually something we do every moment. Our life choices, actions, and experiences are all based on our beliefs. God expresses through those beliefs. God does for us what God does in as and through us. We must build a consciousness of life-affirming belief. It takes practice. Do directed affirmative prayer. Live the God qualities you deserve in your life. Live in alignment with God, not in contradiction. Live in faith, not doubt, not fear. Expect good. Mindfully pray unceasingly. Believe in your own good. Know thyself. Pay attention to your beliefs. Sidebar. Life is love, beauty, and wisdom, as well as energy and imagination. You will be able to use its power in exact proportion as you embody its essence. The one who would heal hate must first learn to love. The one who would live a beautiful life must commune, commune with beauty. The one who must who would give happiness must first become happy. The one who would heal a sense of loss must first have arrived at an inner realization of wholeness. Ernest Holmes. Choose God. Live in wonderment, excitement, and joyous expectation. God's infinite good is you and as all your relationships. See it. Be it. Practice this belief. Remind yourself why it is safe to believe and why it is the truth. Convince yourself. Read, journal, take classes, see a practitioner. Make your life a celebration of this truth. It feels good to feel God. Don't limit yourself to a prayer schedule. See God all the time, in every situation. Consciously choose God. Spiritual Practice Create a spiritual practice, one that you can do daily, a practice that feeds your soul and deepens your awareness of who you are and what life is. Following are some ideas for a spiritual practice. Remember, this is something you do for you. Say an affirmation to bring you back to the truth when you are triggered and lose your peace. Do it wherever you are challenged, whenever you are challenged. When it happens, don't surrender to limit. Choose light. It's your life. Pay attention to it. Journal daily. Journal about different spiritual truths in your life. Open to the answers. They're there. They will come. Keep a gratitude journal. It's something you can work on daily and look back on to get a better picture of your journey. Exercise. Your body is a temple. Love your body. Treat it well. Pray and meditate daily. Connect with the infinite. 
Select a quality that you wish to express. Be that quality all day, every day, for one week. Sidebar. There is nothing between us and God but our own thoughts and beliefs. Ernest Holmes. And here is a practice. If you desire abundance, try the following practice. First, be the abundance in your mind. Why is this possible? Your mind is the mind of God. God is abundance. Yes, it is possible. Next, you must live in abundance consciousness. You can feel abundant anytime, anywhere. Generosity and abundance go hand in hand. Build a consciousness of abundance through generosity. Be generous with your kindness, patience, willingness, and helpfulness. Be generous at work, at home, at play. Feel the feeling of generosity. When we live from abundance and generosity, we become a channel for the overflow of good. Contemplate the feeling tone of generosity. Practice it, live it, be it, and watch the abundance manifest in your life. In class exercise number one, what triggers you? When fear, anger, or any discomforting feeling enters your mind, look at it. Ask yourself, what am I feeling and why? Then affirm the opposite. We change our lives by claiming our good. We claim our good by continuously transforming our beliefs, step by step, inch by inch. Have you ever been been triggered? Does something happen that throws you out of your peace? Sometimes our response to a trigger is too much, over-exaggerated, unnecessary. In that moment, what's going on inside? What's the overwhelming belief that is so very contrary to the good of God? What is distorting reality? What do we need to learn about our beliefs? Is there a hidden belief? Look at the table on the following pages. Look at the disturbance in column one. What belief might underline the speaker's response? Record that belief in column two. What truth would dissolve and transform anger? Record an affirmation in column three. And on the following table, there are 15 things that could possibly anger and upset you. And again, you are to write, why do you feel angry at and up or upset, and then an affirmation to dissolve or transform that anger. So number one, when cars cut me off on the freeway. Number two, when people correct every word I say. Number three, when I'm trying to exit a parking lot and the person in front of me stops his car to talk to the attendant. Number four, when I'm accused of something I didn't do. Five, When my girlfriend or boyfriend stares at another man or woman. Three, when people are mistreated. I just said three, that was six. (laughs) Seven, when a homeless person approaches me. Eight, when people don't agree with my opinion. Nine, when someone fails to keep his or her word. Ten, when the store clerk won't help me and I feel ignored. Eleven, When I call a business and I can't get out of the automated system so I can talk to a real person. 12. When politicians lie. 13. When I am continually interrupted when I am trying to say something important. 14. When someone prejudges me and won't listen to what I'm saying. 15. When a driver takes up two parking spaces in a crowded parking lot. And it continues. 16. When I make thoughtless mistakes. 17. When I hurt someone's feelings. 18. When I do something embarrassing in public. 19. When something I want to hide becomes known to my friends. 20. When I feel ashamed because I can't perform as well as other people. 21. When I feel embarrassed, ashamed because I fail at doing something. 22. When I have to hear really loud music coming out of someone's car. 23. When I imagine having a million dollars, I become anxious. It's just too much for me. What other triggers can you think of? In class, 
Exercise number two, short answers. How does the following quote apply to answered prayer? Seek first the kingdom, Matthew 6 and 3. Where are you experiencing feast in your life? Where are you experiencing famine in your life? Give two examples of how you have been generous to someone without spending any money. Make a list of five of your triggers. What is the truth about you with regard to each one? In class exercise number three, what will be your spiritual practice? Total trust in life. And this is re- written by Ralph Waldo Emerson from the book, The Over Soul. The only profit of that which must be is the great nature in which we rest as the earth lies in the soft arms of the atmosphere. That unity, that over soul within each, within which every man's particular being is contained and made one with all other. That common heart of which all sincere conversation is the worship, to which all right action is submission, that overpowering reality which confutes our tricks and talents and constrains everyone to pass for what he is and to speak from his character and not from his tongue, and which evermore tends to pass into our thought and hand and become wisdom and virtue and power and beauty. Ineffable is the union of man and God in every act of the soul. The simplest person who is in his integrity worships God, becomes God. Yet forever and ever the influx of this better and universal self is new and unsearchable. Ever it inspires awe and astonishment. How dear, how soothing to man arises the idea of God, peopling the lonely place, effacing the scars of our mistakes and disappointments. When we have broken our good when we have broken our god of tradition and ceased from our god of rhetoric then may god fire the heart with his presence it is the doubling of the heart itself nay the infinite enlargement of the heart with a power of growth to a new infinity on every side it inspires in man an infallible trust he has not the conviction but the sight that the best is true and may in that thought easily dismiss all particular uncertainties and fears and adjourn to the sure revelation of time, the solution of his private riddles. He is sure that his welfare is dear to the heart of being. In the presence of law to his mind, he is overflowed with a reliance so universal that it sweeps away all cherished hopes and the most stable projects of mortal condition in its flood. He believes that he cannot escape from his good. The things that are really for thee gravitate to thee. And again, that was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Taught of God. From Ernest Holmes, excerpts from The Science of Mind. A mystic is one who intuitively perceives truth without mental pro- and without mental process arrives at spiritual realization. It is from the teachings of the great mystics that the best in the philosophy of the world has come. Who was there who could have taught such men as these? By what process of mentality did they arrive at their profound conclusions? We are compelled to recognize that spirit alone was their teacher. They were indeed taught of God. The great poets have been true mystics who, through their poems, have revealed the presence of God. The greatest music ever composed was written by the hand of a mystic, and the highest and best in art have come from men of spiritual perception. Great spiritual philosophers are mystics. Our great religions have been given a few who climbed the heights of spiritual vision and caught a fleeting glimpse of ultimate reality. No living soul could have taught them what they knew. The spiritual is the realm of first cause. Therefore, we may read Buddha, Jesus, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, 
Swindenburg, Emerson, Whitman, Browning, or any of the other great mystics, no matter in what age they have lived, and we shall find the same ultimate. The highest mental practice is to listen to this inner voice and declare its presence. All great souls have known this and have constantly striven to, le to let the mind of God express through their mentalities. The Father that dwelleth in me, he does, doeth the works. This was the, was the declaration of the great master, and it should be ours also. Not a limited sense of life, but a limitless one. Ernest Holmes. Spiritual Mind Treatment Birthing a New World Purpose To know the activity of God unfolding through world events Recognition Great God Almighty Divine, infinite, indwelling, all-pervading power and presence we call God I acknowledge the awesome omnipresence of this power everywhere in every one and everything there is nothing that exists outside of the whole of the great all. Recognition. This great all moves and breathes and has its being as the totality of all that I am. The fullness of God has found in me an outlet for its fulfillment in form. And I claim my oneness with, the, with an inseparableness from the all that is God right here and now. Realization. In this consciousness of oneness with all, I speak my word proclaiming that this is God's world. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that everything is indeed working together for the good of God. All of the activity of the world is simply the means by which the divine is birthing itself in ever greater expression. What appear to be the calamities, trials, tribulations of the world are in truth the labor pains of the new world emerging. It is simply the means by which the one and only one power that is springs into ever greater expression into the world. I see the power of God all the world over, in everyone and everything right here and now. I proclaim a world of peace and nonviolence, prosperity and abundance, compassion, inclusion, and diversity, forgiveness, understanding, acceptance, unbound joy and happiness, and overwhelming love. I declare the reality of deep communion with the earth and honoring of her rich tradition and resources. I call forth the reality of ego-friendly world with clean waters, clean air, and replenishing of the soil. I declare that this is God's earth, God's world, God's people and all is right with the world right here and right now. Thanksgiving. For all of this and so much more than eyes can see or ears can hear or feelings can feel, I am grateful. It is with deep, heartfelt gratitude and thanksgiving for the ever-radiant expression of God in as everything that my world has declared that I lovingly let it be. Release. I release my word into the law in the full knowledge and awareness that even before it was uttered, it is already done. And so it is. Aum, Ashe, Amen. Reverend Nirvana Reginald Gale. We live in joy. When all hostility, all resentment, all greed and fear and insecurity are erased from your mind, the state that remains is pure joy. When we become established in that state, we live in joy always. That state of joy, hidden at the very center of consciousness, is the Eden to which the long journey of spiritual seeking leads. There, the mystics of all religions agree, we uncover our original goodness. We don't have to buy it. We don't have to create it. We don't have to pour in, in it. We don't even have to worry of it. This native goodness is the essential core of human nature. The purpose of all valid spiritual dis disciplines, whichever the religion from which they spring, is to enable us to return to this native state of being, not after death, but here and now, an unbroken awareness of the divinity within us and throughout creation. 
and that was by Eknath Isawaran, Original Goddess. And that concludes The Power of Your Word, Week 8, and The Power of Your Word course.